Uh, Ashwarya, we are live now. Uh, you can start. Hi guys. So um, today we are back to yet another really amazing session on YouTube, and uh, we have a very very special. And we have a very special guest today with us, um, Ravleen, who is um, who's a student from Humber College in Canada, and uh, who's an excellent uh, YouTuber, and she's got great experience at being a vlogger. So uh, hi, Ravleen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And doing Hi, this. Ashwarya. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll first introduce myself also. Like I'm a counselor. I've been doing this for five years. And my expertise is in UK and Ireland. And um, Ravleen, now you go ahead and give us a, a introduction about yourself. Like, you know, how you've been uh, doing, how was the experience, everything. Sure. So my name is Ravleen and I am originally from Kashmir, India. And then I did my journalism back in uh, Punjab. And after that, I worked in Delhi for two years and I was in Delhi. And after I had decided before only that I want to study abroad after a certain work experience. And I did that. And then I decided to come here in Canada. And then I studied uh, two courses. First one was advanced filmmaking. And the second one was television writing and production. And now I work as a writer in a media house and I'm also a YouTuber, like you said. So how's your YouTube journey going? Is it, how is it going? Like you've got so many followers. So how's that <laughs> for you? It's going great. I started long ago, like three years back. So I always used to see all these YouTubers and I always used to think, yeah, mujhe bhi ye karna. But I never had the guts, obviously, to do it or like the technical skills to do it because I was always good in front of camera. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know how to use a camera or how to edit. And I never had any interest in all of that. And when I was in journalism studying, doing my bachelor's, I always had friends who would help me do it. But then once I got out of college, I decided if I have to do this, I have to learn all aspects of it. So one day I was just uh, roaming around in Himachal and I saw this really pretty view and I just told my friend, Ki, Apna phone se, please just take a video. So I took this one five minute video and I just spoke for five minutes and I just uploaded it on YouTube like that. But yeah, then I kept uploading, kept learning. So it's a long process of learning and uh, learning, getting more skills, evolving mm -hmm. as a person as well. So yeah, so far so good. In fact, this is the era of, you know, social media, like YouTube and blogging. And, you know, uh, it, it's like, uh, uh, you know, this is something which is really in right now. So I'm sure uh, you're enjoying your blogging. And um, uh, so you're currently in Canada, right? You're in Canada. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, we'll wait uh, maybe two or three minutes more for more people to join in. And then we can proceed uh, further. Okay, so, sure. Yeah, so we have um, some people who have joined us. So um, we'll just wait a little more for till then. Uh, the ones who are here in the live, uh, you know, you can subscribe to our channel and you don't have to miss out on any upcoming videos and live sessions, uh, you know, in the future, you guys will be notified. So, you know, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel because all our sessions are like really, really informative. For the students who are, you know, uh, like Ravleen, they are planning their journeys in the future and, you know, whoever is wanting to go abroad and study. So, uh, however, this session is based on, uh, you know, Canada. So, for future um, uh, sessions, they'll be based on other countries as well. So, please kindly subscribe to our channel. So, do, you don't have to miss out on any amazing session like this one. So Altar has written in the chat that we are also excited. Yes, we all are also very excited to have you all in the live session. And um, we have Sairaj also who has written, you don't want to miss this luckiest one. Great. 
Pooja, hi. Hope you are doing well and safe. So how was your experience, uh, uh, Ravleen? How was your experience in Humber? You know, we've heard so much of Humber College. So uh, what was it like, you know, moving from India to a different place? Uh, you know, how was that experience? Like, was there a culture shock? Or, you know, how was it, the change, the transition? Were you scared or what was it like? Yes, I was scared to death, to be honest, because <laughs> I was all by myself. Yeah. I didn't have any relatives or anyone. I just had one friend that I knew. And I came from India, but first I didn't go to Humber. At first I went to Durham College. I did one year uh, post-grad diploma there. And then I did a one year post-grad diploma in Humber because if you have two year post-grad diploma, you get a three year work experience and then you can apply for your PR after you have enough work experience as well. So basically the government of Canada has made it very uh, systematic uh, when it comes to you applying for your work permit or your PR once you come here to study as well. So first I ended up in a very small town in Oshawa where I studied in Dharam College. And then I came to Humber. So Humber is uh, in the outskirts of Toronto, GT only. And Humber was honestly a great experience. I had heard great things about Humber from mm -hmm. my friends only. They said it's a great college. And once I went there, I could truly see why it has such a wonderful reputation. And that was because the faculty there, the best part about them is that they all work in the industry. So they are all working on projects and they just come here to teach on site, mostly because they have good connections with the, either the program coordinator or just because of uh, like good friendship. So they come back and they all chill together and they're like, oh, fine, we'll teach as well. So all of them usually, so you used to have classes from Monday to Friday, nine to five. Okay. And the classes there are pretty long. They're like three hour classes, unlike in their way. Wow. Yeah. So we used to have one teacher from like... Uh, nine to five nine to one and then we have half an hour break and then another teacher from that point onward to till, till five mm -hmm. and I studied television writing in production it was a lot of fun we used to watch movies so we were like amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> this, is, this is the best thing ever but at the same time we also wrote a lot of scripts mm -hmm. for television and we mm -hmm used to pitch our ideas and stories to professor and they used to um, like check it for us and edit it for us and give us their feedback of course the program is called writing so mm. basically no one teaches you how to do that okay no so you cannot like become a writer by someone telling you write this and write that mm -hmm. it's a process of your own you have to like keep writing a lot of stuff and then mm. maybe you want to write something for tv and mm. i don't know when that'll be but uh, yeah it's a good mentor program for you to be mentored properly and guided in the right way. Of course, you'll also get a lot of connections in the industry. You meet a lot of people. You can take them out for coffee and then you can just network basically. So exactly, go to the, yeah, are a good place of networking. And you meet a lot of like-minded people, you know, who share your interests, and that Absolutely. itself is really encouraging. Absolutely. And if uh, in a field like this, to be on your own, it's quite difficult, especially if you don't have any direction, because mm -hmm. um, if you come, if, for example, if your parents are from the same industry, then you might have a slight idea like what's going on in this industry. But if no one, you know, nobody and you have yeah. no connection, then you find yourself like clueless, like where do I even start from? So mm -hmm. if you take a course like this, the best part is there are like 15, 20, 30 more clueless people now with you. So <laughs> You can actually like ideate, write and create projects, which is amazing. Exactly. And then, you know, working in that environment itself, it's so amazing. And, you know, um, I'm sure once you must have gone from here, uh, you also must have sensed a level of freedom because obviously staying alone and managing everything, the student life and all, that itself is also pretty liberating, don't you think? Like as a student, when you're doing more than just studies, like, you know, taking care of yourself and, you know, the entire thing I'm sure that itself also is a big experience how about that how was that for you oh god that has been life-changing like I <laughs> yeah. couldn't believe <laughs> the kind of person that I've become so if I look back even if I see pictures of myself before when I was in India mm. and, and, and I look at myself now I'm like wow I was so stupid back then <laughs> <laughs> So basically, this has been like a complete game changer for me. And I feel yeah. everyone should, if they can study abroad, they should, because it's kind of like a crash course in life. In right. that one so or two, 
life throws everything at you. You are on a completely different free all by yourself. You are independent. You have to manage your expenses. You have yeah. to fa- make sure that you have enough money till the end of the month. Of course, then you have to buy something. Then you start saving for it. And the best part is that you don't have a golden ring they have beneath you. Like you can't call your parents every five minutes and be like, yeah. oh, "I'm stuck. Uh, help me." There are <laughs> they are like, "Oh no, we don't." <laughs> can only like be here emotionally for you but practically like even if you have to go to the police station you have to do it all by yourself and for right. most people that's like a usual because you know how Indian parents are they're so protected especially mine they were always yeah. protecting me and they were like no you don't have to worry about anything we'll take care of everything mm-hmm. and once I came in I felt a feeling of liberated and of course yeah. I learned so much I even got robbed once I mean that's all story. oh my god <laughs> but I always remember it and I, I'm like, oh, now even if someone comes to me to like steal myself, I'm like, you know what? I've done this also before. <laughs> so I'm ready <laughs> now. <laughs> so it's <laughs> I always joke with my friends, but I've uh, had a lot of experiences that have made me a much better person now. Exactly. Yes, you've grown as a person because, you know, when you're having so many responsibilities, uh, it's itself is a huge experience. So everyone who is live right now and, you know, whoever wants to go abroad, I mean, it's just not the studies or the books. It's also about the experience that counts. You know, you you the sense of independence and liberation that's going to come when you go out there and explore the unknown it's going to be a little scary, Ravine, in the start. But I think three months, four months, you give it, and I think they are going to adjust to the culture and the people there. And of course, Indians are everywhere. So, you know, you'll always find that company. And, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be great for all of you. And so that's really nice. We will cover more of, you know, uh, how the journey of Ravine has been uh, in due course when we start it off. So we have lot of people in the chat box who are writing uh please make a video on journalism in canada all right shinky we'll keep that in mind and uh, hi kunjil a lot of people saying hi to us lovely hi. um <laughs> so yes and um altas is saying this is a story of every alumni so there is altas who's relating to this i'm sure he has also gone through a similar experience and um sunil has written, can you please make videos on bachelors of data analytics in Canada? So everyone who's looking for specific courses and, you know, who wants to know more about, uh, you know, how it is, you guys can go to our website and register and then you guys can book and schedule a personal counseling session where you will be given one-on-one counseling with our country expert and who will be guiding you through the courses and the applications, everything, all right? And the best part is that Leap Scholar also helps in giving IELTS classes, which is the most important step if you're planning to study in Canada because it's compulsory to have an IELTS for applications, okay? So, uh, Sneha, can we know more about Leap Scholarship? So, Sneha, I'll cover this towards the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll tell you in brief. So, yeah. So, I think we should start off with our presentation and let's proceed. And for whoever has joined now, In our live session, please kindly do subscribe to our channel for such more interesting sessions in the future so that you don't have to miss it. You will be notified in advance. Okay. So we are also on Telegram, guys. We have our own channel on Telegram. So you can subscribe to that session. You will be notified about, uh, uh, you know, uh, university updates and, you know, the kind of courses that are available and the scholarship options of the uh, the colleges and all of that so you will be notified so kindly do join our telegram channel as well for uh, getting the notifications all the updated notifications okay so i'll be covering uh, certain questions i'll be asking Ravleen and she uh, will be covering various topics and uh, uh, if you guys have any questions while the session is going on if you have any queries and you want to ask something to Ravleen please kindly put it on the chat box and uh, we'll proceed uh, and we'll answer those questions. All right, so Ravleen, the very important question, I'm sure you must be expecting this question. Why did you choose filmmaking as a career? Like, you know, uh, I'm sure you've already told us to work in the uh, first, in the start of the live, but I'm sure so many people have joined in right now. So tell us why have you chosen filmmaking and why you chose Canada out of all the country options? Sure. So basically, I studied bachelor's in journalism and I wanted to do my postgrad 
And when I was thinking about doing a post grad, there were a lot of options. I could have done it in digital marketing or public relation. But I'm inclined towards filmmaking because, like I said, by that time I had started making videos on YouTube and I had grown interest in this form of storytelling as well, whether it's video or it's films or short films. And I thought I will just do it. And honestly, I didn't think much about it. I just had this gut feeling that I just followed and went with it because um, I didn't even know much about it at that time. And um, I just looked up for like filmmaking courses in Canada. And why Canada specifically? Because of a lot of reasons. Because first of all, Canada is a very welcoming country when it comes to uh, students who want to study abroad and the process for them to get a work permit and a PR, like I said before, it's pretty, um, like it's very easy. Hmm. And on top of that, um, the conversion later, a rate of dollar versus rupees with Canada is less than if you go to any, um, for example, London or US. And at that time, going to yes was pretty difficult as Trump was there and he had made a lot of different bunch of rules. And also it was very expensive. So basically in my budget, um, Canada suited me best. And apart from that, I knew a friend who was already here. Hmm. Uh, before coming to Canada, a lot of my friends told me, but you know, Canada doesn't seem like a party country to go there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, I could have got to go and I wanted to party, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go on vacation to Paris eventually <laughs> <laughs> but for living yes Canada yeah. is great. and initially when I came here for the first I think first day I was crying and I was like I want to go back <laughs> when is the next like how can I book it tell me <laughs> because <laughs> geographically Canada is three times bigger than India and the population mm. is so less so I came from Delhi. Imagine Chandni Chowk, where you just walk in there, like 500 people walking with you. Oh, God. And I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I landed in Canada and I'm like all by myself. And I was in this small town and there were no people. And I was like, I just want to go back. <laughs> but then at that very point, I just met my friend who was already here. And then she started telling me, oh, get your sim. And by the first week, to be honest with you, Ashwarya, the moment you start attending your classes, mm. you get so busy that you have no time to even like sob over it. That, oh God, why am I doing this? <laughs> and all. You don't even have time to have those thoughts because you go to your classes and you have one million things to do already. You have to find a place. You have to, you start studying. And then they give, the best part about these courses abroad is that they give you so many assignments. I don't know if they do it deliberately. So the students are always busy doing something because you know how they say an idle man is a devil's workshop. So they never want you to be idle. They give you so okay. many assignments that keeps you happy and busy. So just life just goes on. And then you start making friends. And you find a little home away from home eventually. Right, right, right. So of course, like, uh, it is like, you know, starting me, it's going to feel like ki thoda sa, you will feel intimidated about the entire culture change, you know, about so less people as compared to how we find India as but eventually if you take time to settle in and you know gradually once the class starts I'm sure you'll feel more at peace where you are so that's great and of course filmmaking involves you I'm sure as a student you you guys must be asking to watch a lot of movies right for a lot of documentaries a lot of movies right as a part of your course so that the uh, you know the expertise grows right that also happens in filmmaking yeah. that happens okay all right. So, um, so how was your experience with the entire course, like uh, the faculty and the college? Uh, I'm sure you have covered this earlier also, but then, you know, so many people have joined again. So can you just tell us briefly about how it was, the faculty and how were they helping as students? Like, were they helpful and how was the culture there as, as a college? How was the help that was given to you? Yes, absolutely. So basically, uh, the mistake that I did was, first of all, I just looked up for like filmmaking course, because that's like the key word here, filmmaking. But the thing is that there is no such thing as filmmaking course. There was one course, which now I don't think they have it anymore. But what they do have is video production course. So if you want to learn how to make videos, per se, if you want to learn how to handle camera, or how to even edit, that's that course for that. But other than that, if you like, there are so many areas to filmmaking, that just filmmaking couldn't be a course eventually for them. So they had to change it. So you could either do like video make um, video production, you could do writing or you could do post-production, animation. Um, uh, so there are like so many things. So 
even in filmmaking mm. you have to choose what is your expertise even acting mm. comes in filmmaking um improv acting theater drama direction like so many things so you have to like mm. actually first sit down if someone wants to pursue filmmaking they have to sit down and analyze what exactly do they want or what comes close to what they want right whatever comes close and whatever area of set they want to be on they can pursue that particular area my experience with this whole uh, writing for television course and filmmaking course was amazing because of the fact like we discussed before because i like i got to be amongst a lot of like minded people and mm-hmm. together that whole time was very motivating and inspiring because the professors would constantly motivate us and give us ideas that you should do this you should do that and i would constantly be working on one or the other project and making something so that during that time i made some of my best projects and learned most of the things like it was so fast paced and i met people who i could be like oh could you please uh, help me out with this and i could help you out with this so basically if you don't know something and your classmate know that you can always make a team and work together on this and now my friends are there still working we still collaborate together we still write together sometimes we have mm-hmm. these writing rooms where we discuss our scripts that we are writing and uh, so yeah that was my and professors they were amazing because like i said before they all work in the industry so mm-hmm. they also tell us about their experience so, oh i'm working on this show right now and this is how it's doing this is what i wrote this is what's happening in the industry right now so yeah and the professors are very chill here they don't like judge you for even a bad script that you wrote or anything they're just very modest and nice to you they're like okay it's okay you can do better <laughs> just keep trying <laughs> all right and any project that you have worked on like you said you worked on so many projects so any any project specifically one project that you would like to talk about which has been memorable uh, about something do you have any project in mind that you thought was really fun and yeah sure so when we uh, when i was studying writing for television we did this project it's called um artist's life and what's it about is that one of our professor he d- did it every year so basically he used to um sit with this one director and they used to have like a chat show like an interview sort of um show with him and they would talk about different topics whether it's um gun violence or any of those topics mm-hmm. and then the class was divided into different parts whoever wanted to do whatever for example some wanted to direct the show some wanted to write it i ended up in the editing room because there was only one other person who was editing it and okay. um, i thought it's a good opportunity for me to learn editing because i'm not that good of an editor mm-hmm. so i worked under him and we started editing and i i learned how difficult that whole process is but at the same time how much fun you can have with it um so we worked on it for months it was a lot of back and forth like oh this is not right send it back and we kept doing it and i was like wow people out there are doing it every day and this is how it looks it actually looks a lot of fun because <laughs> you know if you are really passionate about something and if you really um if you've been thinking about doing it for your whole life and you when you start doing it even if it's difficult even if you don't sleep at night you will still not complain and you'll still be happy doing it so that's yeah. what i felt exactly and you're continuously learning in the process you're getting better every day so uh, you know anything that works like you know makes your skills stronger i mean that's definitely enjoyable once you're doing it with a lot of passion and love so that is true so everyone in the chat who's you know aspiring to be a filmmaker or you know wants to get into uh, more intricate uh, skills like editing and all i think this is the best course you guys can go for so proceeding to uh, the next set of question uh, how did you shortlist your colleges and uh, what was the admission criteria and requirements that you faced like so once i decided that i wanted to go to canada the second big question is where in canada do i want to go to and that would eventually bring out my list of colleges so i decided i want to be in toronto because i had two options either toronto or vancouver because they are um, the biggest cities and where most of the uh, films or tv shows are shot so i knew there would be a lot of work in these two cities and then i decided for toronto because like i said one of my friend was already here and she was already studying here so i knew it would be a great help um so i just came to toronto and when i started researching about toronto i found i made a list of myself with, of five colleges of course i had a counselor at that time as well and she also helped me a lot she was amazing but at the same time i would also recommend um students or viewers to do their own research as well 
because at the end of it you have to decide what you want to do a counselor is there to help you they're only going to make your way easier and they'll guide you where you want guidance but if you are like completely like uh, i don't know anything <laughs> so yeah. then even it becomes difficult for counselor to be like oh do i have to decide your future for you <laughs> like that yeah. becomes a tricky situation even my counselor was like we had such a great rapport she was so she was so much fun i would always bug her all the time i would like mm-hmm. i would just be on her top of her like would she do this or do then she was like she had so much patience with me but at the same time she also really appreciated that i was kind of doing my own homework as well and i was researching yeah. a lot about it so i called my friend and i asked her so my um, first um, suggestion is if you know mm-hmm. someone there just call them up and ask yeah. them where they are studying and what would be the top 5 colleges for me in um Toronto i realized that the top 5 colleges are humber george brown seneca centennial there was durham that was on my list as well and then okay. i uh, they, at that time i applied at all 5 of them and i heard back from durham first so i went there it also depends on how many seats they have some colleges don't have enough seats for international students so basically you have to like apply to a bunch of colleges and then decide which one takes you or which one you take if you get more offers okay great so uh students who are planning for canada so it's very important for in fact this applies to any country that you're planning for that you know you do a little bit of your own uh, research a little bit of background uh, knowledge needs to be there so you know you guys can uh, read a lot about the country and everything so that you all know what you want to do because uh, you know a lot of time uh, students come to us and then they ask us you know what course is best for us because see uh, we'll be able to tell you which course uh, is best for you based on your profile but at the end of the day as students uh, you all also have to know you know uh, where your passion lies right because at the end of the day as students you all have to study and uh, you know you guys need to enjoy the subject like what i do with my students is i always tell them that please choose a subject where you all enjoying the subject when you're studying it uh, so eventually you should never lose interest while you are studying that uh, course and uh, talking about admission criteria and requirements one of the basic thing let me tell you guys is that if you're planning for canada then you need to have an ielts so please start preparing for your ielts uh, you know because in in advance before applications because it's mandatory while applying and um, uh, due to covid situation currently here in india there are some colleges which are issuing a conditional offer letter so if in case you are planning for january 2022 uh, you know you can apply to canada colleges with uh, your ielts registration but some kind of proof that you are sitting for an ielts so make sure that you all are preparing for ielts much more uh, much in advance and um, shinki here has written that uh, you know if there is any scope of masters in journalism in canada uh yes shinki there's a lot of lot of scope for journalism as a subject in canada but if you want a detailed counseling you can register yourself in leap scholar it just takes 2 minutes for the registration and then you'll be quickly connected to a counselor who will be able to help you one on one uh based on your profile and everything we'll suggest you the best options available all right so moving on um uh what did it cost uh the total cost to pursue the course in canada what was the expenditure like and what kind of expenditure were you facing there also so basically the uh, post grad diploma for one year costs around $16000 and on top of that if you want to go to canada you have to apply for gic and you have to submit an amount there as well back in the day when i came it was $10000 i think now it's $20000 so basically what they do is that they take this money f- and they keep it in your bank account for you and every month you get sort of pocket money from it mm-hmm. you can of course choose to spend it or you can choose to save it if you are working part time and you don't need that money but that's just there because if you go to a foreign city and of course you need some sort of money coming in towards you every month and um um yeah that was the expenditure and then i did another course which was another 16000 okay great all right so um when it comes to costing guys when it comes to uh, canada of course it's 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 a very very feasible country if you wanting to pursue a post graduate diploma in and uh, you know uh, you get a stay back also in the country so that's a really great option if you are wanting to explore in a uh, bare minimum cost and you can get really good uh, degree as well so 
all right so um, what is the average pay scale in this field uh, if you're freelancing what is the kind of income that you can expect uh, what can they expect from that um honestly i googled this and <laughs> i found out that an average um, income for a writer here in canada is somewhere between for an entry level it would start with $30000 per annum and it could go up to $90000 per annum as well depending on how much your area of expertise is hmm. but yeah for freelance or as a writer or as anything here in canada if you're just starting off hmm. for entry level you get minimum wage which is um 14.50 dollar per hour right now hmm. mm-hmm. which comes down to if you work full time 40 hours a week it comes down to around $30000 per annum so that's mm-hmm. the starting if you're starting from the bottom but of course you learn and depends on how good you are at your skills and how fast you grow and how eager you are it will increase okay within a year it could get to 50000 per annum and then of course within two or three years you could go higher right so uh, 30000 if we'll take it in the current rate guys it's around almost 18 lakh per annum right that's how it is like okay. in indian currency and of course uh, once you guys are working there gradually the salary increases okay so how are the career opportunities as a creator in canada different from india how yeah how was how was that how how do you think is the change from here to there like what do you think how it is uh to be honest there are a lot of fields where it's very different for example in it i see people okay so if you google like the top jobs in canada or the top job skills or the top jobs that can canadian government wants mm. there are a bunch of jobs in there for example there is nursing healthcare um it and all of those jobs they are really really high paying so if you work in those jobs in india compared to canada the difference is huge like they pay a lot lawyers dentists doctors they get a lot of money but when when it comes to journalism and filmmaking courses like i said the entry level is not that big um in terms of money and of course uh, i didn't see a lot of difference when it comes to india and canada when it comes to the field because a field like journalism and filmmaking is such that there is no for sure path for you Mm-hmm. like there would be if you were supposed an it or a dentist like you know i'll do this and i'll do this and i'll get this amount of money yeah. but journalism and filmmaking is so different that you have to first show what you can do and depending on what you can do is what where you will go and you have to do a lot of networking you have to talk to a lot of people of course there are so many opportunities the way it started with me was first i was always writing even in india so here also i started applying for writing gigs online and i got job like that and then i started making friends who helped me get an agent and that agent helped me get work on sets so i worked on a lot of uh, movie sets and on film sets and right now because of covid we don't have a lot of that going on but but yes depending on how much you are networking and how much um interested and aggressive you are with your career yeah. approach in filmmaking and journalism mm. there are so many opportunities there is always something or the other going on there is always something you can do with it exactly so th- that's what it comes down to these kind of fields they all depend upon the networking that you do if the student is outgoing they have you guys have to be outgoing you know uh, it's just not that uh, it's not like india where you know you're just learning and you're putting it on paper it's not just that it's also basically how outgoing you are how aggressive you are in the uh, process you know uh, going out there getting things done that's how i think uh, that's what ravin you've done right like you've just gone out your way and you've worked you've interacted with a lot of people and it worked so of course at the end of the day um, any course that you all are pursuing you guys have to be a little more proactive in the entire approach so all right so what are the advantages and disadvantages as a freelancer that you face i honestly only see advantages of working as a freelancer i personally work, love it i mean each to their own some people are working a um, mm. 95 job but for me mm. the only problem is that if i have to do the exact same thing every single day it becomes quite monotonous for me and i get mm. really bored so with mm. freelancing the best part is that you could do anything and everything like every day could look different for you 
and at the same time you have a source of money coming towards you as well mm -hmm. uh for me um i work with online media and i have to interview uh, small or medium businesses and i have to tell their stories like how are they doing how they start and all of those stories so for, so for me every day is different because i get to talk to so many different entrepreneurs and i get to know their story and i work at my own time and i work at my own when i want to work i will work when i don't want to work i won't work and my editor is also very chill about it like also i feel like in canada the work um, the work environment is very very chill you know how in india there is this whole hustle culture that go 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 yeah. go go and yeah. even in employment or work culture i worked there for 2 years you work from 9 to 5 but you can even get up uh, you even get to go home from work for at 9 in the evening sometimes yeah. and you're expected to work in the uh, weekends as well sometimes so there is yeah. no but here if it's 9 to 5 you have to leave at 5 and if you have to work after 5 you get paid extra okay and they have to ask you like would you like to work after 5 and you can say no yeah. thank you and they'll be like oh they can't do anything about it like and if you say yes you say yes because you need the money yeah. and that's it so there's no pressure there's no um same goes for freelancing as well there is mm -hmm. no even in india when i was doing freelancing um sometimes there is a lot of pressure like go 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 do 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 but here people are people believe in like life enjoying life and just they know that work is not the only part of life there are so many yeah. other aspects to it so you need mental health you need your peace of mind you have to focus on your health as well so sometimes if you tell your boss that okay i'm not feeling well they're like yeah they understand they like, go okay you have a lot of pressure you are exhausted we get it <laughs> which i really yeah. appreciate her. same goes for freelancing and same goes for others if i have to talk about disadvantage disadvantage i would say the only disadvantage is that you have to like i said go out and find your work first of all mm -hmm. it, it, there's no um like stability that you know that okay this much money will come every month so you it depends on how much effort you put like i said before So is it very competitive or is it healthy competition like it's not that difficult to find a job as compared to here in India uh, how is no, the competitiveness it's difficult to find a job because there are not that many jobs here okay. but once you get a job it's not difficult to like secure that job and grow in that job so i would say the first part is difficult to get in the industry but once you're in that industry things get easier Okay, so since Canada is giving a stay back option, I'm sure people will not have that much of a trouble in finding a job because they've yeah. got this time period where they can relax. Yeah, so that's great. Um. Okay, so um, how can students start working on building their portfolio from India who wants to pursue a career in this field or anywhere abroad? And uh, what are the mistakes that you made in your journey? So how did you learn from that? So you can address the first question. Yeah. So how can you start building your portfolio from India? Is that whatever you want to work on, just start working on it already, and see if that is exactly what you want. Because even when you really know that this is what I want, sometimes when you start doing it, you realize, oh, maybe this is not what I want. <laughs> so instead of spending so much money on that course, for example, if you are in animation, just YouTube has everything. So start. even in, when you're in india just start learning about animation from youtube and start doing it so once you're in the process of doing it maybe you realize hmm maybe it's not for me maybe i want to do something else maybe mm -hmm. animation just per se is not for you you want to do for example you want to do editing or you want to do a videography like i said mm -hmm. so yeah. always have some sort of knowledge and always learn skills i had a friend we mm -hmm. were together in film making when we first started we were in first week only we were given this project that we had to make mm -hmm. a personal documentary and mm -hmm. he came from india he was just a, he was into dancing to be honest with you okay, and he wow. had never held, he had never held a camera in his hand and he had never done anything before and the first documentary that he made um we were all just looking at each other like what was it was really bad like really bad. he's <laughs> my best friend but it was really bad and we were like okay what is he even doing but he saw that and he saw something in it and he's like oh i actually enjoyed making this even really bad documentary <laughs> and he had so much fun doing it that i saw him just sit on his laptop for hours for his next project editing it 
and i thought something is got it in him like what just happened you <laughs> forgot to eat you would forget everything the moment we would we would have a project like we will go out to shoot and we'll come back he would just start editing it and he would spend all his night we had editing rooms in our college as well and i would see him editing all night and in the morning it was just ready and once i saw his second project wow. it was a thousand times better than his first project and i was like okay wow so that's when he just found his zen like he found this is what i want to do and now he makes these really amazing travel art films for a lot of brands so he found his niche so his niche was to make those one to two minute cinematic ad sort of films Mm-hmm. travel at so so in film making like i said there are so many small niches that you can grasp on to he found that was his thing and like i said if you find what you like for him it was during the course but if you can find it before and then decide where you want to go from there mm. that will be good exactly so it's all about finding what you guys love doing and then pursue that so uh, talking about portfolio yes uh, for these kind of courses uh, like when it comes to we have a in the chat box there's dhruv asking us that um, he want he's a photographer and he wants to do freelance work uh, or a full time job so um um whenever if you're wanting to pursue photography even in canada or as a matter of fact any country you need a very strong portfolio isn't it uh, because photography does require right i mean because uh, it does require a portfolio photography or even writing or editing for everything hmm. you require a very strong portfolio strong so work portfolio. on a portfolio make a good portfolio that can that you can send to people and on top of it try to work for free in the beginning even if you're working in india so that you have a clientele sort of so exactly go portfolio doesn't just mean that you work for yourself it could show mm. that you actually worked for other people for example if you want to do wedding photography yeah. you can't just make a portfolio and be like oh i want to do it but i haven't done it because you're looking right. for someone to pay you to do it that's not how a portfolio works you have to go to a friend's wedding or any event, wedding that you can go to and click really good pictures even if they don't yeah. pay you for it that's how most of my wedding photographer friends started by mm. just going to friends wedding and taking pictures and then adding that to your portfolio and then telling everyone else they said i can take your pictures for free in the beginning right. then word of mouth will spread and then they'll be like oh they really like your pictures and then you can start earning money exactly that's a really really amazing tip uh, dhruv so because you yourself is a wedding photographer um and uh, you know you can easily apply for a photography course and then you know you can route it through there and then you can future me you can apply for a pr uh because he is primarily looking at pr and uh, i know photographer or film making jobs are very less uh, yeah and don't pay much see it's always also not about the pay roof it's also about uh, the course so once you start getting better and better and once you starting to develop your skill uh, you know you will grow and uh, you know you can earn a lot in the time so it like she said it's all about building a first uh, building a good clientele and then you know the word starts spreading for you and then then that's how it goes so uh what are, what do you think are the common myths people have about studying abroad film making you know anything that you i think the biggest know. myth is this movie called ye jawani hai diwani which even i saw which is like <laughs> oh <laughs> yes <laughs> and most bollywood movies so the biggest myth is about studying abroad are all bollywood movies honestly yeah, they are yeah. like, who are these people first of all how much money do they have they just go abroad and they just yes. party all the time <laughs> but for us people it's not that guys <laughs> i mean of course you party but those are not the kind of parties you see in karan johar movies they're different kind exactly. of parties they're much much real parties <laughs> but yeah, yeah the biggest myth about studying abroad is that you you go abroad and then you're just traveling and having fun all the time hmm. first of all that takes a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> which takes a lot of time to earn and say of course you'll do all of that in due time yeah when you go to study abroad the first one year or first two year are going to be very difficult mm-hmm. everyone told me you know these if you cross these two years then life will get easier for you it only gets better after that but for the first two years it's so difficult that you're make trying to make ends meet you're trying to study earning money so difficult and if you've taken loans to go out then um getting that loan a uh, bag is also very difficult so hmm. basically financially it's pretty hard 
in the first two years but once you start working full time you will get a lot of money because here they pay really well they can't pay you less they have you they have to pay you minimum wage right so even if you pay even if you get minimum wage at a job that you really really hate it doesn't really matter if you do it for a year or two financially you'll get stable and then yeah. you will start earning good money and then you can do all of those seven job movie things <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's it. that's true that's true definitely and uh, all right so we'll move on so yeah so uh, any questions you have so dhruv again is asking that uh, can we use work permit and freelancing rather than do a full time job uh, ravleen so do you yeah no you can't you have to do a full time job for one year at least uh, before you apply for your pr that's what happened with me as well so i had to take a job uh, like a job that i really hated i didn't like that very much but like that's the whole thing ru see if you're doing photography you have to understand there are so many people who want to be photographers and they are probably just as good as you are and in photography you're probably not going to find a full time job that easily if you're lucky enough you might find one of my friend did it he did it with a college george brown cloud college so they had their food um hospitality program and he was uh, the photographer for all the food that they used to make so if you're lucky enough to find a full time job as a photographer that's amazing for you you have to work there for at least one year before you apply for your pr permanent residency but uh, if not you can find job in some other. that's why if you are in a field like photography it's always best to have some sort of other option that you can work mm-hmm. on if you for that one year even if it's like something that's in demand for example editing or something else okay all right so uh, any questions you guys have you guys can drop it in the chat box and uh, we'll address that with whatever time we've got right now and um, so ravleen i personally also wanted to know and i'm sure all the students have this this is a very common question uh, how is the part time job scenario there in canada like you know what kind of j- part time jobs are available and how was your experience like how was it part time jobs yes they are available for students and um, depending on your location um, if you live in city like toronto downtown you can get a part time job easily but if you live in a more of a countryside or in far off locations it might get, take longer but you'll still find part time jobs like every student does part time jobs to survive and the different kind of part time jobs are either you can work in food chains restaurants you can work in um as a waiter or as a food prep um or in the back in kitchen or you can work in factories you can also mm. work as freelance and um yeah those are the basic part time jobs that you can get and the way you can get is that you can just once you decide where you're living in where your college is you can just go around ask people if someone is giving a part time job and you can drop in your resumes at different different stores and you'll find a job you can even work at like mcdonalds dominos a lot yeah. of students work there i know it's very yeah. difficult and nobody comes here to work at mcdonalds and but the thing is that you know how the basic basic human nature is that oh this job is not good for me it's not good for my reputation but nobody cares about your reputation nobody knows you here and there is yeah. no such thing as some job is big or some job is small especially a part time yeah. job it's just for you to go through with it so you just go through with it. it's a way it's a journey for you to go somewhere else so you're not staying there yeah. you think of it like that and just move on with it yeah and part time job is basically guys as students it's for earning money it's like a pocket money that you're earning for yourself and uh, there is most important thing is so many uh, you know students do ask me this question could you address that of lean that you know uh, they don't want to work in mcdonalds and restaurants but guys it's just in india but outside when you're going there it's uh, there's a very basic respect of labor where it does not matter what position you're working or where you're working it's all about basic respect of what you're doing and they do not look down upon such jobs and as students uh, you know you you guys will grow 10 times after doing these kind these jobs right because you know you're learning a lot of things you're practicing patience right uh, while doing this so absolutely even ellen degeneres had once said this in an interview that everyone in their life should work as a waiter at least once because right. that just brings you to whole different level of humanity it makes right. you more human it makes you more grounded next time you go to a restaurant you'll never be rude to any person <laughs> exactly exactly that's really true um 
So Altaz in the chat box has written, "Hi, I'm a computer engineer who has a deep interest in filmmaking and acting. Is it possible to do a filmmaking course along with engineering? Also, apart from building my portfolio, do you have any suggestions?" Yes, Altaz. First, you have to decide if you want to do acting or if you want to do filmmaking. Like I said, these are two different things. If you're mm-hmm. interested in acting, what you can do is you can pursue your engineering course or whatever that you are studying, and you can go to theater classes, theater workshops, acting classes. Those are like a month long, or sometimes two months long, or <clears throat> sometimes you can do it on the weekend. And acting is acting, of course. Acting is acting, like in India or in Canada or anywhere in the world. You know how acting yeah. profession is. You have to go and then you have to give auditions. Acting is not like a full time job. So if you are coming here to get your permanent residency, then of course you have to do something else as well. But you can pursue acting on the side, hundred percent. Okay. All right. So that I hope Altaz that has answered your question. And uh, Dhruv is again asking: um, Are freelance hours counted towards part time work? um freelance hours i don't think is even considered as a part time job here so the part time hours are different and freelance is different but i don't think they are counted no okay all right and yes dhruv does agree saying all jobs are equal in canada that's very true dhruv i hope that also answered your question and uh, uh everyone who's in the chat who's wanting you know who wants to know more and wants to get into a one on one counseling please do register with us on leaf caller website and i think once you have this one on one session you guys can clear all your doubts uh rahul has written ma'am i am pharmacy student do i have any scope there uh, how how what do you think ravin is how is the pharmaceutical industry there in canada i think it's pretty strong like i said the whole medical yeah. healthcare um um system is very strong because it's always in demand it's always in need people always need medicine so yes you can definitely pursue your programs at pharmacy you can check do your research see which colleges have these programs get in touch with any alumni who's already done it on facebook just try to find those facebook groups of their colleges and their messages ask them how how they're doing and of course talk to your counselor and they'd be able to suggest to you more okay So Rahul, that I hope has answered your question. And um, moving on, uh, guys, again, like I'm reiterating the same fact. Like, if you want a one-on-one counseling, you just need to go and register on the website. It will take two minutes, and then you know you guys can ask more detailed questions there. So, um, anything else, uh, Ravin, that you would like to give a tip to the students, you know, uh, whoever is wanting to study and come to Canada in the next year, Jan 2022 session. or as a matter of fact some students might be here in the live who are uh, wanting who are who might be coming for the september session so any tips any suggestions that you would like to give i would just like to give that um, just be in the moment enjoy this time because um as much as much as you think this is really difficult but it's you're going to remember this for your whole life so just learn as much as you can from this time and it's going to be amazing don't take stress just just have fun with it that's the most important part <laughs> that's great um so like just don't be scared if it's uh, difficult guys because if it's difficult that means you guys are going to grow so uh, whoever is planning uh, just you know uh so I, you know register with us and then uh, you know start your journey uh, do some background research upon what course you really want to pursue and where your interest lies where your passion lies and and do that because at the end of the day you guys want to build your careers on on the subject you guys are going to go and pursue and um, ravleen thank you so much uh, for joining us for this live session it was really really amazing talking to you and uh, i hope you also you feel the same to you yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it was really a lot of fun talking to you. All right, thank you so much, Ravleen. Hope to again meet you uh, in person one day, and maybe again we can do a live session once again. Once again, and um, do take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye.